Center podcast with Colin Jettis. Big thumb. Big thumb. He was good. Like thumb Yorkie. He was really good in that, that interview, but it's just like, know, Four that, hours, you, know that you're going to completely delete the first 15 minutes of it before you start. L- Liam Gallagher's was the best, though. <laughs> so I, I'll save that one because it is, it is good, like. He just like the first the first question I asked him was like he wasn't doing a piano session, and I was like going so what you know like obviously Liam I Liam, and I was like you know being an Oasis you know being such a John Lennon fan ballads that you've written like the piano must be a powerful instrument you, for you it's like going yeah man I love the sound of it and it's great for racking up lines on. <laughs> 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 we all started laughing when we had to restart the interview. Like he, yeah. Even he started laughing. You don't actually see him laugh that much. He's normally, <coughs> he normally just sort of like plays yeah. character and stays. I away. just imagine the big fuck. What, what's that brand? Stein? <laughs> no, fucking horror. Giant piano. Tiger sitting on it. And like, fucking <laughs> radio on piano, like. <laughs> <laughs> Probably though, you know, nice, nice shiny surface. Who knows? I. uh bought these glasses and it's it looks a lot like that video I used to do, the best of McD thing. Oh, those, Slo- those videos were great. I, I really enjoyed those. Slowly morphing into it. That was the one with like the wee sort of flap cap, wasn't it? Wee, yeah. Wee ear flaps. Which, you know, there are certain times where that would be handy to wear. But then I ruined it for myself, didn't I? <laughs> you know, like you were in the video and then it's like... <laughs> he can't, like... You know, it's like sometimes there might be an occasion where I maybe need like a headband thing on. Yeah. Can't do it. Well, that's it. That's what you you do too many characters. You're gonna like end up dressing like one of them. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Well, not anymore. Thank fuck. But uh, are we are we go are we going? Did we catch that uh, Liam Gallagher story? Uh, Incriminating. <laughs> I'll do. I'll, uh, can I can I do it again and yeah, do do do, do a, like more PG version, but also still saying what it is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and just beep it all. Anyway, do 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 do, 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 do lines all, you know? We all laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you keep all the, the only bit that sends the name. Anyway, Liam Gallagher was <laughs> No, I can tell. Drugs. I think I can tell it. It's fine. Like. Okay. We'll do a crap a crap intro because I'm not good at it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jenner Banner podcast. This is one of our six-part series, which will be on Patreon, initially. Mm-hmm. We're going to call it the SummerSlam. Does that mean you're going to suplex me through the table? It, it can be arranged. <laughs> <laughs> My guest today, you see, how would you describe yourself? Is it radio presenter? Presenter, in yeah. general? Yeah, I don't know. Like just Sort of a new, new music specialist? Yeah, I guess. Like, I mean, the, the new music stuff is what I did at, at, like, Radio 1. And I do a lot of it at Sirius and stuff, too. But, yeah, I just chat shit about music constantly over and over again and and made a living out of it i would have been doing the exact same thing in the grange park in oma fucking chatting to pigeons like it <laughs> yeah figured out how to get paid for it and our guest today phil taggart everyone. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Let, let you introduce yourself and then jump in with a name uh <laughs> so that yeah like you know that's a good place to start when you're talking to someone who does something professionally you're saying you would have been doing that anyway, probably. Yeah, I mean, like, you like, you, you got you got into comedy because you liked making people laugh. I'd assume either that or you oh, were just yeah. you, you were just like going, I just want to make loads of money. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm now. But <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just like I like playing records and I like sharing records, and um, I was playing in bands and stuff for for ages, and then. You know, that, that that was the main thing. Like when you're between like 14 and 24, you're like, right, I want to be in a really big band. And God, like the amount of like nearly moments that, that you have, like where you nearly get signed by some creepy dude in a <laughs> suit from, from London who comes over to Dublin and gets you really drunk. Yeah. Um, and it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to make you a star. And then, you know, you phone him back the next week and he's like going, sorry, who, who sorry, sorry, who is this? Yeah, people are dead confident when they're pissed and full of coke. A, a little bit, but like when when you're that age, you get really t- torn up by anything that goes wrong in your your yeah. your career, whether it's comedy, whether it's creative, like anything vaguely creative. Um, but we you, we had like a guy from Parlophone come over and try and sign us when we were like eighteen, nineteen, and 
What was your band? We called Colenso Parade. So like we had a couple of like labels like chasing us around at, at one stage, and then we finished over, due to overwhelming lack of interest. Um, but the, <laughs> the, the, the the guy uh, the guy that w- was trying to sign us, we that sounds like a real <coughs> like a diagnosis. The overwhelming lack of interest. <laughs> <laughs> guy with the stethoscope on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we we sent him our EP, and he's like, "Yeah, send us the next bit. We're gonna give you, give you a development deal. We're gonna come watch you play. We're gonna do this. Like, you know, we're gonna work together." He had signed like Suicide <laughs> and, and like Hard Fight and like The Darkness and people like that. And we we're like, "Oh yeah, this clearly cleanse the parade. The band from Omer, the next in line." Yeah, uh, and oh, then we I can um, write a note there. We got to the very. <laughs> you can listen to Hard Fight. <laughs> Living for the weekend <laughs> and then go to the cash I machine. Ju- I just remember doing something <laughs> where like someone was organizing this thing. They're like, oh, we're going to, we're going to, it's like a teen nightclub thing where they, we let win, like competition winners DJ. Right. Yeah. So they got to play yeah. back to back. They play like five songs or something like that. Uh-huh. And I remember, and I, I don't know why I was asked to go. It was just, you know, oh, you, they'll watch your videos and you want to just fucking turn up and I don't you know, you do stuff like early in your career and you're like, what the fuck was I doing there at all? <laughs> but I remember at the time, and I was probably like 23 or four or something, just being freaked out by the fact that all these 16 year olds had like five songs and every little section, every little set had hard fire living for the weekend. <laughs> and I was, even I was like, this is so bizarre. Like, this would be like naff. They're not even living for the weekend because they're working. They're just at school. <laughs> and like, do you know what I mean? Tearing their ties off and going fucking nuts. But I was, I was blown away. I was just like, you know, like eight out of these fucking ten kids have it's powerful. Oh, it's fucking tune, man! Very, very powerful I've, stuff was I've, hard fight. I've, I've, I have three <laughs> albums, uh, yeah, and this is my favorite song from all three of those albums. Yeah, I just think that that guy like wrote his whole album just like a stream of consciousness. I'm going to a cash machine, and then I'm going to the co-op, yeah. and I'm going to buy a th- oven pizza. <laughs> yeah, just just lads full of gear, going like it's like a day in the life. Of a regular guy. Exactly. This is what it means to be human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what, see, see, no one was going to ask you about uh, <laughs> being signed and stuff was like, I don't know whether it's me specifically or just the way things go now. How important is that now? Uh, well, what getting, does getting signed mean? It, I mean, like, y- y- you can quantify it like loads of different ways. Like, I mean, if you're going to be, it depends on what, what sort of music you make. If you go, if you want to be a big pop star, um, you know, like Lil Mix or One Direction or Rihanna, then yeah, you definitely need to. Yeah. If you want to be a scratchy indie band, you can go and work. You can do it yourself, or you can go like a, a an indie label. Yeah. Um. Or you know, as you you see with like the majority of like grime artists or or hip hop artists or whatever, they just make their own. They they get all their numbers on social media, and then they don't need to sign to a label, <laughs> so they get to get a distributor, somebody who like puts it all out, and then they get a really favorable rate. So like. You see people like Skepta or Stormzy. Um, Stormzy to a lesser level, like Skepta and like say Joey Badass and Chance the Rapper. Skepta on the wall here, that red picture. Big Skeppy. I've, I've, he, he broke into one of my shows once. I was live on air and he was like, brother, I've got something for you. And it was right around the, the time that the Brits were happening and Kanye was like over. And he, like, we got a phone call. Was that a what? message he sent you? Or yeah. did he say it that calmly and politely? <laughs> Boom. Brother, I've got Brother, something. Brother, I've got something for you. Um, but I was like, I, it wasn't even a nighttime show. It was like in the middle of the day where you're playing fucking Stushy and Labyrinth or whatever. <laughs> and um, you get a phone call from you're down, like, come in downstairs and it's like Skepta's outside. And I'd met him a couple of times by stage and I got on really well with him. And he just came upstairs and was going like, I've got, I've got something for you. And then he just like came up and he says he's written four songs with Kanye. We just had to let him on air because he was there. Oh, like, yeah, he wasn't planned. The producer was like brand new. He was like standing in for somebody who had no idea what the fuck to do. Yeah. And I was just like, well, Skepta's I say, you got to let him on. Yeah. So at the end of the interview, he tells us all this sort of stuff. And um, like everybody goes a bit mad for it. And he goes, I'm going to give you my, actually, I'm going to give you my email address. And, and he folds He sounds a lot different he when he's not spitting bars. Yeah, know? well, I'm not going to drop the sickest 16 that Northern Ireland's ever seen. Like, <laughs> But I, I, he folds it up and puts it across the table. And I, I, can't get, I can't give his email address out, right? But like his email address was basically like skepta at whatever <laughs> dot co dot uk. And I was like, are you serious? You actually uh, wrote that down. I thought that was going to be code. I was like, yeah. you know, tracksuit mafia 131 or some shit. Yeah. Like, or like it's management or something. <laughs> Mr. Skepta. Yeah, exactly. AOL dot co dot uk. Well, here's my number 077 777 777 777. 
<laughs> I'm also pretty sure like, like after uh, he, after he won his um, Mercury Music Prize, I was really drunk and I was chatting to him backstage and I was like telling him about like how important what what he had done as an independent artist for not just grime community but like I was just on one I was just fucking steaming and I was like it's important for everybody young boys picking up guitars and I was like doing this like Coach Carter vibe like and I'm and, he, and he's got his ear down he's listening but he's like I know. Like looking around I'm pretty it. sure he was crying though. I really? swear to fuck. <laughs> like, I, like I, I, I've told this to my producer at the time, and I was like, I think I made Skepta cry, and he's just like, bullshit. You did. You definitely didn't. Like, and still to this day, I still believe I did. But like, there is now a healthy amount of doubt in my head whether I did or not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just him fucking wiping his face. Like, oh yeah. man, thanks so, so much. So like, I mean, if you build up your own fan base, you don't need anybody, but the people to help sort of put the nuts and bolts in like you know you know yourself like do you know do you know what i mean what, what, what you've built yeah with and the problem is you get to the point where you're you're weird about handing over or like delegating responsibility Any so control. someone's like oh yeah we'll we'll look after that and you're like hi how are you gonna look after you, mm. know, you know you get real like fucking trust issues but you, you can't keep building something that big and continue to look after every single element of it or otherwise it'll drive you mad oh yeah for sure for sure yeah like the other day I was genuinely, uh, like, I don't know whether I was talking to you now, I can't remember, I was like, what would you pay a social media manager? Do you I, mean? I was I, like, if someone just walked around with a phone and you were like, put this up, here's a link, he'll send you a video, you know. I had one for like about three months and thought it was the most pointless thing in the world ever and they charged a fucking fortune. Because like, I, like, I'm really crap at social media and I, I don't really play the game with it and I was in a, I was in Radio 1 with literally fucking every single one of them playing the game and, and them like making sure that everything was on point and I was just like presenters I, I, and stuff yeah presenters other, loads yeah. of presenters like and I mean like you know go through the followers like but anyway um, <laughs> see how see what the numbers really are mm. but like um, oh right okay so uh, big, big in Indonesia <laughs> big Russian <laughs> following here the but but like the anyway there there was there was like you know tons of pressure on you to, to do this and so I was like alright maybe I should do it but I'm so lazy. Like uh, the first four years out of Instagram I had, I had a picture of a skateboard up and that was it. <laughs> Fucking rad, dude. Yeah, like a thousand followers. Caption, and, living for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> popping popping kick flips and breaking just, you hearts. Know, no, one, no one got like social media back then. It was just like, you know, Phil Tucker, and it was like, is skating. You know, you just fucking put in what you were doing after the... Grinding down your ears. Yeah. <laughs> Waxing the, up your ears. The skateboarding presenter. <laughs> <laughs> That's my angle. Terrible, yeah. terrible background noise. <laughs> Here, up next. Up next, we've got the news. Tail sliding into the news. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to kickflip right over to uh, this new song. Ivan with the weather. <laughs> so how do, how the fuck do you go? <laughs> Weather's not rad. Weather's not rad. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It's not rad. Uh, violent that was. Um. So like we're so you were in bands and then the, were you doing were you sort of like like how do you how do you end up in that sort of presenter role was there like did you get on the radio somewhere local the, here the dole the dole the dole yeah dole radio um dole radio <laughs> yeah exactly just uh just playing you I've heard I heard one of my band songs in when I was getting the dole once like uh, and it was on wow. cool, it was playlisted on Cool FM. And at that point, you know, they, they bolt down the chairs in the in the benefits office so people can't lose the bap and throw them about. Wow. I was just like about to lose the bap because I was so happy that I'd heard me song on the radio. Yeah. I was like, this is great. Yeah. She's like, well, what are the 12 things that you've done over the last month to look for work? And I was like, I'm getting played on Cool FM. Yeah. Shout out, Pete. <laughs> Big up the cash prize. Where's your previous place of employment? You're like flipping... PRS right now, that's 15 quid, split four ways. <laughs> <laughs> Am I doing the double now? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, no, I was. I did media studies in Coleraine, and, and I mean, that was all right. Like, it was a, a, a it passed the time, and it was, did a bit of English, and it was fine. Um, and then I remember somebody saying to me halfway through the, the media degree, going, listen, if you want to get into the BBC, the best way to do it is just, like, go on the dole for six months and i was like i'm spending about fucking 15 grand or whatever on this on, on this like d degree yeah and there was a thing called csv media and lo and behold right enough like i was on the dole for about six months playing in the band and i went in and they were like we're gonna cut your benefits off if you don't do a steps to work scheme you're young and you need to be doing something yeah so they were trying to get me on the site 
And I was like, they would eat me. Like, they would use me like a fucking toothpick on on the site. Yeah. If you got anything else going, I know you have a media thing. And you had to really ask for it. Like, it was behind, like, a secret curtain or something. And they were like, no, I don't know what you're on about me, media thing. You're like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Frank Mitchell. Yeah. And then they're like, all oh, right, media thing, aye. Um, so they they, 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 they they get you in. And you do a three-month course. And then I got on the, across the line and started really badly editing stuff for them for, at, yeah. the, at the at the start and then um they stuck me on air i didn't even want to go on air i was every time i w- went behind a mic i shit myself i went red in the face and yeah. they'd be like going i'd be doing gig listings and i'd be like the diamond rock club and a hall uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the answer are playing in the diamond rock <coughs> club and the hall again <laughs> again <laughs> this week as well yeah exactly <laughs> Like I, I think the first time I pronounced it, I'd never seen it before. Oh yeah, I was like, I got go go. <laughs> oh yeah, there's plenty of that up there. But I, I remember at that sort of time, um, the only, I think, the only other podcast that I was aware of that wasn't the audio picnic one that we were doing was the a- ATL. The one. ATL one, yeah, I just have to edit that every week. Yeah, weird, and it's like OG, OG podcasting. OG, yeah. I mean, like, it's taken. Uh, you know, it's about two years ago before people are, they, they just know what a podcast is. They're yeah, like, I've heard yeah. of it. What is it? Don't know what it is. You yeah. know, whatever. Um, podcast is an old, old Victorian ship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the time capsule. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was the only other one. And it was, it was edited. And it's funny, like, you know, you come and write up, you're still doing Chill the Beats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chill the Beats is my baby. Like, I, I, I do that flat out. So it's funny, it's funny how, People used to be locked into that radio thing, mm. and then they're like, oh, "That's a bit too structured." And like we were talking before we hit record, you know, the the fucking shite people have to talk in between songs, um, and it went from that structured thing, and you're like, "Just play the fucking music," or just do the talking or whatever, to very loose and free, and you're like, "Oh, this is great. This is just guys or girls or comedians or whatever talking shite." And now there's so much of that that now when you now people like structured things mm. where it has like a theme and they're like, no, I listen to this because it's well fucking produced and it's it's going back to more like a well produced program. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, de- but you're doing it yourself. But no, no, it, it definitely is. Like, I mean, like, like, Chill the Beats is like, it's kind of like open the mic and just chat shit for four minutes and then here's three records and then open the mic and chat shit for four or five minutes. And here. I don't think people understand the, the formula of it right now, which is mind blowing. Like, like, I mean, in the industry, really, because, like, it's essentially just radio, but without being produced. Spotify only? Yeah, Spotify only, yeah. It's just me playing chill records um, from all across the genres and all across, like, the, the decades and stuff. And, you know, it's got a real good community of, like, music fans and, like, people who maybe are just new to it or people who are a little bit more nerdy. Um, and it's, like, like I mean, there's six or 700 just people chatting about it every single day in this wee Discord group and stuff, and it goes up, like, twice a week. But I think that like the podcasts have jumped the shark now. Like I mean, in terms of like who, oh yeah, what what the podcasts are about and who they've got on it, it'll be like people, Richard Ayoade's flipping uh, journey to the center of the sun. Where we they, fire people, people just like you know, especially during the lockdown. I I seen people I know just. They're, they're just like oh you know I record my podcast and then I go for brunch and then I record my other podcast and then you're like oh let me do the brunch with fucking <laughs> Philly you know yeah it's like they were just. Every fucking thought they had was like a uh-huh. new thing. Oh, you know, every night I wa- this is watching Friends with fucking whoever. And you're like, every, not everything has to be a podcast. That or you just go for the stereotypical, you know, welcome back, welcome back to Rape Murders with, you know, it's like yeah, the it's darkest the- fucking shit that you can research on the internet. It's like- there's just, there's just, <laughs> people are doing them because they think they should be doing them. And they're doing them about absolutely fucking anything they can think of. And you just get any broadcaster or any sort of like, um, like celebrity or whatever that has massive numbers. Well, that's the so, way it's going now. Well, no, it, it like it really is because like we, I had um, I was like there was a, a big streaming platform that I had something down to the very, very, very last bit, where over over lockdown, me and Mickey, my my mate, wrote um, a sketch show and we wrote like a load of we wrote a pilot for it and we wrote about fifty sketches, and we got you know Michael Fry who does like the. Matthew Fry or Michael Fry does like all of the sort of indie band stuff on, oh, on yeah, Twitter. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got him and a girl called Kira Knight in um, to do them, and like we 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 made them for about a about a year, and it got down to the very last minute, and we have five hundred thousand followers between us, 
and they were like going, sorry, you don't have enough followers. Like they're like, you know, that we love the show, but you don't have enough followers. And I was like, and you can't say the streaming. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, they were like, going, we love it, but you don't have enough followers. Um, so I was like thinking, you know, if we got fucking Paris Hilton to, <laughs> to come on and go, Paris Hilton sketch comedy or whatever. And it, but the, yeah, I mean, you are gonna get like that. It, you know, it's like. You look at like Joe Rogan or something, f- totally guest based. You you know mm. you wouldn't really tune in to hear him talk all the yeah, time. It's like a big famous guy gets other big famous people on, and it just gets. But it's, I think it's, it's like the new book deal. Yeah, there be there be a manager somewhere going like, uh, you know, you've time in the day here to be doing a podcast, and you could be getting sponsors and big deals all over the place. And they're like, all right. But I think it's kind of grim because like there's people out there who've got really really good ideas who maybe like haven't got. Like loads of followers, so like somebody, somebody, somebody new who's starting out, they might have the best idea for a podcast. They might be the most interesting person, and it might be like the the best thing you'd ever listen to. But because like it doesn't have like Danny Dyer slobbering all over it, it's never going to get made. Yeah, and you know, there's nothing stopping you doing it by yourself either. You, yeah, you yeah. can still do it. Yeah, but it's just that sort of like. That top that, tier, that, like, you know, like yeah. we're, we're going to put this in every single carousel that you look at, and it's, yeah. it's almost going to be impossible to like look past it. You know, like, you know, I enjoy where I'm at with my podcast because it's grown and it's not even that big, but it, there's enough people where they're waiting for it. They buy merch, they go to gigs they do, and you're sort of mm. like, what more do you really want? Do you really want it to get like to blow up to this massive audience where you're going to get people who shouldn't be listening, you know, like wouldn't normally listen to it. And then like, yeah. who the fuck is this? Loud my fucking, you know, and then you're going <laughs> to get the people that you don't necessarily wanted to get to. It's just but, organically growing at the moment. But it's like, you, you've got like, you've got such a big, big uh, audience for it and about a hundred million Patreons as well. Do you know what I mean? A hundred million this hun- week. One, one hundred million. Just the wee ticker tape goes off. But no, it fluctuates. It goes <laughs> up and down. Like, we, you know, we're doing, you have to, it's just that. What's the worst thing that you've done with like a, 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 like you've said something or done something and you've lost the most amount? Nothing. No, it, no would, nothing. It, would, it would never get affected like that, I don't think. I suppose that that's the, like, the people who listen to the show know that you're going to say some shit the, anyway. The worst <laughs> thing I could do is, you know, neglect it, you know, like... Just not put anything not up. Not put anything up, which is... Which I only ever do if I'm, like, if I physically can't do it. Aye. You know, there's... Especially, like, this week with comedy, the live stuff coming back, you're like, there's, I can't... Unless I'm sitting here at four in the morning, I'm not going to be able to do it, like, so... <laughs> just, just, like, dry and out for content... Did anybody see outside? Oh well, there's that too. There's outside, that too. Like, outside. I, I see. That's why I think like I I would struggle to do a podcast like weekly about just general shit. But that's Be- because like I don't know if I have the the chat for an hour about ju- just, just anything. <laughs> just by chance, that's the the shitty niche that's been carved out there. Because General Bander is the worst name of all time. But it was a a nickname for a section that we had in an old in Audio Picnic. Mm-hmm. It was the just General Bander. What have you been up to? And we took that, and it's fucking crap. It's a crap name, but uh, you know you. It, 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 I mean, it, it, it does works. what it says. In it the works, tent. but like, because I've been doing that for about ten years, like just talking shit about anything, and I started that to get material f- for, for the comedy, stage. Yeah, yeah. It's, it can sort of regenerate over and over and over and uh-huh. over again. I feel like if it was specifically themed, I would definitely just run out of ideas after about eight weeks. <laughs> it's like, today's theme is synchronized swimming. Yeah, yeah, we're covering everything. <laughs> Do you remember back in the golf episode, you were, you know, it's like, just, but I think that's, you know, there's weeks where like I fucking have nine coffees and just go off on one about some bullshit and then apologize at the end of it and someone's like, no, nah, that's what we're here for, man, don't worry about it. Yeah, that's... But that you've that's lost like, your fucking mind over, like... But that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Like, I, I I, like those moments where you kind of go into a weird state of flow and you just don't really know what you've said and you come out the other end of it going, am I sacked or was that the best show I've ever done? <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that you know, the, the, the cancel culture thing is talked about a lot between comedians and you're like, I feel like the people who really go under with the cancel culture are the ones who try and portray this like I'm fucking... Holier than thou. Yeah, I'm a saint over here. Yeah. If they know you're a piece of shit and there's, there's <laughs> any any number of opportunities to yeah. fucking just take something out of context and try and ruin you, you're like, I was joking the other week. I was like, I wish someone would cancel me just to get a fucking week off. <laughs> so I'm cancelled this week, guys. Those those comedians that seem, the to, get, seem to get cancelled, they all just <laughs> tend to come back a year later anyway, like Louis C.K. And, um, well, that's it. I, I, I mean, the Louis C.K. thing's a, a weird one because... I mean, it's awful to say, but I'm like, it's not that he, he got caught in that wave of the Cosbys and the whatever. 
and all these other cunts, but you're like, comedians are fuck like, you, they're nuts. Like, I've seen numerous fucking comedians' dicks. I've seen them fucking <laughs> do stupid stuff. I've seen, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're, you know, most of them are wild bastards. Like, they're so people who are wired to try and make you laugh, whether you want to or not. Like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And or just react. To, that, that doesn't really shut off when the mic mic's like down. Do you know it, what I mean? Nor should it. You know, that's yeah. they're, they're the good ones, but. Uh, yeah, you're just you're you're taking the behavior of a normal person and sort of being like that's not acceptable, and you're like, but when you're in a fucking circus of mad bastards, uh -huh. that's not that even that's not even that weird. You know Do what I mean? Is is your is your like comedian group like because like you you see it like you know Shane and and Mickey and and Aaron and and all all the, <coughs> all the rest of the guys like. Is it as wild as it as it w once was, or is no. it like has everybody chilled a bit? No, you still got the everybody's having babies and stuff. Exactly. now. Exactly, you still have the fucking. You know the the real road warriors like Mickey trying to Mickey Martin <laughs> pull everyone down. You know, <laughs> even yesterday was it yesterday? The day before, I right, we're going for like our McCann's leaving for, for London. He's like, well, we're going for McCann's leaving, dude. And even McCann was like, are we? You know, he was just like, <laughs> listen, we're drinking at three. I've been on for three days just, <laughs> just so prep. I don't pull a muscle. Do you and know what I mean? And sure enough, oh, his muscle is flexed. <laughs> his, his is working. Like, did Aaron get a picture? Because the thing is, if you leave Oma, right? Yeah, you get a picture in the Tyrone Herald, not the Ulster Herald. The Tyrone Herald's like the the wee um, the wee sort of Monday version. It's not as big as uh, the, the Thursday version, and it'll be him in like Annie's bar or whatever, like lying over it. Like you know, it'll be a guy lying over a load of other guys, like li like making that sort of joke. Going, yeah. oh, look at look at me. I shouldn't be lying across you. I'm wild. Um, and then they then they go to Australia, and then they come back. Um, about a year later with liver spots and no hair and yeah. like <laughs> burnt to a crisp. Yeah, and they... Well, Gambling I mean, addiction. Yeah, whenever he went to LA the first time, I was like, you're going to be the yank. You're going to be like the guy that they call the yank because he was in America <laughs> for like a couple of months and you're just propping up the bar yeah. like... <laughs> there he is himself, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. <laughs> <laughs> How's the old comedy going for you? Making anybody laugh? <laughs> I don't know why that's an Oma accent. Like, fucking hell, that's him from there. <laughs> But <laughs> just talk normally. I know, just talk normally. That's it. Did you ever have to soften that when you're like not really? In the no. Big smoke. I got like everybody in Northern Ireland told me when I was going over to slow down. I was a little bit more wild when I was like 24 going over there, and um, and uh, yeah, I was very shouty and yeah. very, just very fucking in your face, like, and probably really annoying as well. Like, but um, but uh, so far, yeah. But I mean. No, I don't think so. Like, I, like it, my my accent's pretty pretty neutral. If you were like playing Sims and you were like, there's a Northern Ireland version of The Sims, I feel that like I would be in like the one or two or three accent. It would be like, <laughs> I'm not in my head. Like, I've never, up. ever played Sims? Come on up. <laughs> you never you never played Sims? You I ever, just never been. Never built a wall around. Like invite your neighbor's um, <laughs> girlfriend over and start having an affair with her, then build a wall around her and then put a bookcase and a fire in it and watch her burn to bits. I didn't. Oh, what you haven't lived, man! So you can like, murder. You can murder and you could in the early ones. You could put them. Oh in, wow! You, you could put them into the pool. Invite them over for a pool party. <laughs> invite four people around for a pool party and then take the stairs out and just watch them all drown. And then the, like the wee, Sims dark. The, 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 wee, the wee gravestones would come up and they're their family would come over and weep and then you would try and do the same to them. <laughs> it was great. It was like a serial killer's dream. I tapped out at like Mario Kart. <laughs> it's like, I keep fucking crashing. Fuck this. No, the, the, the Sims. I didn't know that. I didn't know you could go fucking dark like that. No, the, the, yeah, the early, the early Sims, but you'd be playing it on like, you know, the house computer, which Aye. was in the in the living room, Aye. and it would take next to the TV. <laughs> next, <laughs> next to the TV. What are you looking at? The, like your the mum can see on the reflection of the TV what you're looking at on yeah. the thing. What are you looking at? Wrestling. <laughs> Wrestling. <laughs> just watching these bitches dry in here. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, look away. It's just a picture of Sable, <laughs> Jet from the Gladiators. <laughs> yeah. Ten out of ten. Where are? Where is she now? Yeah. <laughs> Let's find out. No. Uh, <laughs> so fucking. Uh, so you didn't have to soften it. I, yeah, I mean, like Armi Khan, for example. We, you know, we went to visit him in LA, and he did not. He fucking turned it up. You know, asking for pints of harp. Oh no, like, I remember seeing the videos. Like him, he was like doing, doing like the sort of culture speak to to them. But I remember I bumped into him a few times in Oma, and he was like, "Tell me." He was living in a pod with about a hundred different people or something like that. Oh yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole other fucking story. Yeah, I really like Aaron though. He said, I think he'd do really well in London. He will, yeah. And he he has he told a story yesterday or the day before on on this podcast about 
being taken under the wing of Ahmed Jalili. What? Really? Yeah, just take a shine to him. And and what what like what does being taken under the wing mean? Like, like, does, like sort like of he's just like giving him know, advice like, and stuff like that. Yeah, like sort of setting them up in clubs and wow, you know, like he yeah. Like, what was it, what was the club? Uh, oh, for fuck's sake! What do you call that place? Forget. Um, he's a digital nomad, is Aaron? Like you know, he'll find find his his fr- friends online and stuff and be able to build. Yeah, he's a he's a networker. He's just a big Labrador that just walks in wagging his tail and everyone's like, Everybody loves him. He's, he's cute. No, he can stay. <laughs> um, don't take him on a comedy tour with you. Useless. Uh, <laughs> funny on stage all the rest of the time. Deadwood. But uh, I, was, I, li- <laughs> I just remember the time we were looking for, we were in Manchester going to Liverpool or something. And I was like, can you, uh, I bought the tickets and forgot to ask what platform it was. And I was like, look up and see what platform where we're leaving from here my next door right no he goes oh man my phone my battery's dead and I went no physically look up here <laughs> and see and also we just left the hotel why the fuck is your phone dead yeah sort your life out if you, you left them I don't know how you survived how honest. old's Aaron like 26 or something like where I, how old are you like I'm 30, 34 th- I'm 34 right so I, I think there's a, the difference in those 8 years oh for sure on like how you use technology and how like do you know what I mean it feels like a quite, quite a not a big gap because like we obviously like know how to use stuff but like I think from but 26 under it's like it's almost like a part of your hand whereas well, I can remember times without it like, but not for him not for he seems easy going enough hmm. it's like man there's no credit on it and sim cards out so why bother charging <laughs> anyway he's taking up too much in our time right here miss you boo boo miss you boo boo what have you so at the minute you've got the chill debates and then this serious thing. How mm. recent is that? Serious thing um, came up, came about in January. Uh, I left Radio One after ten years in December. Did they have some big sort of uh, what do you call it, like diversity sweep through the building? What like get, in BBC? Get rid of me. Um, they they well they they like I I finished after like ten years because I was just like you know like this ten I've, years in, in BBC in after yeah Radio One I started like ten years I was I broadcasting for nine years and then like a year before that I was like working as like just editing and stuff like yeah. that so I'd worked for the company for like ten years um, and it was great like I had, I had like a, a really good time but like you know all good things and all <coughs> um, so when I when I finished there. Um, I was like, right, well, what the fuck do I do now? <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's almost this like uh, idea when you have finishing your first job, really, which that essentially was the first job. You're like going, I don't think I'm qualified to do anything. Anything at all. Yeah, yet. exactly. I have no idea. I'm going to be in the, like, I, I had no idea what job I was going to be doing. Um, but I was like, I kind of hope I'm going to do radio. And then Sirius phoned me pretty much straight away. They were like, do you want a job broadcasting at North America um, five days a week? And I was getting really pissed off at Radio 1 because I was only doing one show a week and I yeah. wanted to do loads more. Yeah. And the show I was doing was doing really well. So um, now that I'm doing five, I'm pretty happy. I'm actually content. I don't even know what this feeling is. I'm almost like paranoid about being content. I'm like going, when the fuck does this stop? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what and I mean? It's, it's just done remotely. Like they, yeah, yeah I just, just do, I do it. Like, it. I have the exact same setup as, as you do with your, your audio and I, I do it and... Um, send it out and you get like the, the American audience are so so much of a laugh like in comparison to over here like over here you'll be like does anybody want to shout out and they'll be like Jess and Kidderminster's getting her GCSEs tomorrow and she wants to, she wants you to play Frank Hard Ocean again. <laughs> <Hard fight. laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jess and Kidderminster's dad wants you to play Hard <laughs> yeah. says loves her very much but he's definitely living for the weekend <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. Um, that. That's the name of the podcast. Uh, <laughs> um, but you, you, your, your shout outs are all like they're they're one one set sentence and then that's it. And even coming back to Radio Ulster now and doing my show here, that's really funny. Like Big Marty the trucker says, "Keep her, let play Tiesto," and you're like, "Going, oh, Jesus, you're not in Kansas anymore." Like, yeah. Um, and Why? What are the American ones? The like? American like, ones will send you like five thousand word appraisals on oh, your really? show. I thought it was the and opposite. They just no, be like, hey, no, they'll Trump be like twenty twenty play. They'll be like, hey, Leon. hello, my Irish brother. Um, top of the morning to you. And like, I'm trying, like, I'm like, there's a, yeah, there's, and then they say, and then they Sirius do, is they like, a, what is that? That's like a subscription. It's a subscription satellite radio um, show, uh, a radio channel that goes across North America, Canada, and 
and the US and it's like 34.5 million subscribers or whatever Howard Stern's on it Jeez, yeah like it's, uh, that's that, the big yeah. one so like yeah like I'm just like looking at ones now and they're like yeah I would like me and my husband went to Blennerhassett Castle back in like <laughs> 19, 1976. We went with the we went with the O'Donnells, and the O'Donnells are from Donegal, and it just keeps going on like this. Yeah. And then at the very end, she'd be like, "Could you play with or without you?" <laughs> <laughs> I actually really enjoy it. Like I get, I get a real kick. Like, I, I obviously can't read them all out on air, but like. I get a kick from reading them because they're all that, so, that they're sounds all so like nice. It could be a, its own podcast on the side, just reading American texts. Yeah, because <laughs> they go in like like they're like I I wish that like, I kind of was American in a way because they're they're, they're growing up told that every single person in the country can be the president, right? You can be president when you grow up one day, mm -hmm. whereas like you know in Northern Ireland. You think you can be somebody? Oh, do it's, you? The, it's the like it's the exact opposite. It's the exact opposite, <laughs> and then they come, they clash together. Well, because they're both fully like cliched people. You know, it's like yeah. I watched the video the other week, and it was asking for directions in Ireland or something, and it was an American. You know, like one of these Americans, like we're the fucking O'Donnells or whatever. Burns, that was it. Yeah. The guy was like, I'm a burn, and he's like, we're here in fucking asshole, but like wherever they were. And they were asking this fella, he's about 70, coming out of the shop. And they're like, we're looking for uh, the Burns residence. And he goes, oh, well, I'm a Burns as well. And, you know, this whole thing started. And, it, and he was basically going, it's just down the road. But it took like <laughs> fucking 20 minutes of this guy going, oh, my God, that's where they live beside the old flatterties. And this guy's like, can you come to a chicken? And if you don't see the chicken, you go around the chicken and up the <laughs> And just these two fucking weirdos were, I was like, this is a fucking nightmare. Like, there was there was a video that went up last week um, on TikTok. And it sums Northern Ireland up better than anything. Do you know the one I'm on about? The guy in the street. The guy in the street. Have you seen that now? The guy. The guy's in the street. And the, he, the, there's a dub guy who's up. Uh, yeah, he's up partying or whatever. It's, it looks like it's about four in the morning, and yeah. he's he, he's running around and he. He goes, oh, and he turns the camera around to this guy, and this guy just walks up and he goes, being alive is a fucking nightmare. And then he walks away. <laughs> and it's, he's like, he's a young dub guy as well. He's like full of the night. He's yeah. like going, oh, where are yeah. we friends? Oh, where, yes, the yeah. where the fuck am I? Being alive is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> and the dude has the most wonderful, like, vinyl black hair. Yeah. Like, just fucking greased up. And he's like, <laughs> being, al you tiny guy. <laughs> being alive is a fucking nightmare. He looks like a little paramilitary Lego man. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's so funny. But we, we've talked about that with a few people. Like, that, that shitty mentality that you get over here, where it's just like, like I'm sure you had it a bunch. Where I, got like, a what you, I got a lot of shit when there's I was. There's a fucking there's a radio waves over there. Look, <laughs> I got fucking. I got a lot of that. Like at the start, um, and it would be the best one I had was I was sitting in my my local McCann's in Oma. And I was just having a few pints with my mates. Like and McCann's is the sort of place that they used to take me make me take out my earring when I was going in. And oh, take uh, my, you know one of those ones for your own good. And you'd be like, going, can I have a G and T? Like we don't do cocktails here. Yeah. <laughs> you have a pint there, you have a whiskey. Um, but um, uh, <laughs> I was sitting down and this guy just lands into the door. And, I, and I'm only about a week, or no, a year or two in. And he just turns to me and he just looks at me. And he's like going, there he is, two stripe Grimmy. Two stripe Grimmy. I know, I pissed me. I was like, that's really funny. Like, I mean, I can't even be angry at that. Like, yeah, I'm, like it's weird that he's trying to dismiss it. But then, you know. That's a fairly um, niche reference I know for it, a guy in Oma. Like. Yeah, well, he I think he was like, he's not, he wasn't a culture, like he was a, he's a townie. Oh. It's different, you know. Um, but uh, no, I got, yeah, I got loads of it. Like people give you shit, but like after a while, it turns from shit to people being really nice. Yeah, it is bizarre. Like, you know, especially anything that's just not a regular job or not a, not a manual job. Even people are like, you were gifted it or something. Exactly. See, if, if you imagine somebody from Oma like invented the vaccine, ain't you're fucking better than me just because you invented the COVID vaccine, uh, did you? <laughs> I fucking Walter White over here I, doing science in his fucking shed. Why is it? You don't have any, do you? <laughs> <laughs> that's the, be that's the best. That's the best one. You would hear like cultures like growing up, and they would like shout it because like I didn't do anything growing up, but I would like skateboard and not have long hair, and they'd be like. Oh, there you are, you stoner. And I'd be like, no, oh, not really. Yeah, just ev everyone's long, a goth because you're, you're wearing, like, you know, vans. And then they think, then those cultures, like, about 10 years later, and they would come up to you in a bar steaming, going, and I'm like, 
I don't do anything. They would like, come up to you and go, here, have you got any of that old wacky back? You know, so I didn't fucking smoke that in the first place. And they're like going, how times have changed. Unbelievable. You get, <laughs> you're bored up in your wee hut. <laughs> I would get that, but just, you know, because I'll dress and look like a drug dealer. <laughs> which has happened many times where like people will just be like, have you any fucking gear on you? Whatever. You're like, no. No, mm-hmm. just because I look like a fucking Polish trans date. No. <laughs> no, I don't. Or... I don't stand next to a door because I'll just be holding the door open for people like a bouncer for the next 45 minutes. AD. Uh, I could, yeah, you could see that. It happens a lot. Like if, I, if I'm leaving a bar or something, I'm like, I'm going to head there. And then I'm like, <laughs> I just get the voice. So I'm going to head there. Look, that's it. I'm just, you know, keep just pressing your finger to your ear just to make it like look, I, look like I'm going. Let me stop here. Hold on. I go ahead. going to have to run over to Lemonet 1 here. <laughs> there's a bit of a. For two fags. There's a bit of an issue. Somebody's drinking my peroni. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So you're back in Belfast now? Back, back in Belfast, yeah. But, um, been away for like been away for like 10 years. I was in London and then I was in Brighton for a bit. And I was getting really homesick maybe about two, three years ago. And I was coming home a lot more often. And then... Did people give you the... What? Oh, here he is, back Oh, he is, back in. Yeah, prodigal son. Not go well for you, no? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Tail between your legs. What are you up to now? Just meth. <laughs> and just, just um no but like no I, I, <laughs> just saying meth <laughs> um no no I've, I've really enjoyed i'm really enjoying being back like where do I, you live now i'm just living on armor road and in, nice. in, in, in belfast like i was sort of trying to figure out where where would be good but i mean i've put on about a stone since i've moved to armor road there's so much nice food places it's there's four sp- there's four ice cream places gelato there's gelato, there's mods, there's the Mullins in the shop, and there's another one somewhere. Well, that's... that's. I got my vaccine yesterday and treated myself like a child and went and got, like, three scoops of Mullins ice cream and sat in the sofa, like, going, I'm, I'm such so, a good, I'm I'm such so a good well. boy. I'm such a good boy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need a vaccine for that sort of treat. <laughs> it's, di- <laughs> it's different coming back at this age, because, like, you, you, you've got, like, a car and a dog, and, and you can... Go and do things like when you're when you're in your early twenties in Belfast, you're doing nothing and you've got no money as well. So yeah. like you're you're going from uh, like from the house to Lavery's or Auntie Annie's, and yeah, drinking a, drinking a bottle of Buckfast or rolling it under the back door at Auntie Annie's, which is always a good technique. Yeah, you go in, get your get your free flyer, get into Auntie Annie's free. Your mate rolls through the bottles of Buckfast and you go up and hide them somewhere. At the back end, Danny's. What a shift. What a shift. Oh, yeah. So if you're going to go out five nights a week, you need to figure out how to <laughs> afford it on the dole. Like, you know. There was a girl I used to work with, with and she, I'm drawing a picture for you here. You know, like a bottle of Malibu? Yes. It's kind of that shape. Just put this bit up the crack of her quite sizable ass <laughs> and just no. waddle into somewhere and would just fucking take it out and pop the lid off and be like, look, 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 look. <laughs> ass and coconut. <laughs> My dream. <laughs> But you're so right. It's it's like I went to uni in Derry, very last minute, wasn't planned. It was just like fuck, you know when you you got that dread when you're like that age and you're like I gotta do something. Mm. There's no way I can fucking wait a year and go somewhere else. Yeah, and just ended up there. And not in my head, I'm like, Derry, shit, man. But I was there with no money and fucking couldn't do anything. You go back to Derry now, you love it. Yeah, oh, I had a brunch and a fucking whatever and had yeah. a dinner beside the river and you know. The beautiful river with <laughs> just hanging the, out in Alton Galvin all day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Loving it. Uh, but yeah, you're so right. And like even um we've talked about Aaron a lot, but he was like, Oh, that Lisburn Road's fairly good gentrified. And I was like, No, it was the original. It was yeah. It was yeah. always fancy. Like I moved my way up it. Like but like I started off in like Melrose Street and by the very end of it I was like living down like by the Greens is it the Greens Pizza or whatever, down down around mm. the bottom. Uh, I was living around that bit and you would go, go down it and like, just the, the the cars were nicer and then the houses were nicer and you were just like going i'm still skinned this is shit yeah <laughs> i go into the marks and spencers and buy one one like ready meal and that's me fucked for the week yeah <laughs> cut it up in the lines <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're just like well if i have the rice on monday and tuesday then i'll deserve the meat the on gym. wednesday and thursday and friday <laughs> boojum is the new version of that you know people will be like that'll do me that's there five, was a really five meals in that there was a burrito place down there as well that had sort of it was pre boojum down there. Chalcos? I don't know what it was, but it wasn't as good. I don't know. Chal- if it was Chalcos. I don't think it was Chalcos. No, it wasn't. It was an independent one. I can't Chalco's remember. Chalcos not independent? No? I don't know. I don't, know. I don't think it is that one, though. Uh, 
I love the way we, we just stopped dead in the conversation when it, came, just, to, when it came to Mexican food. No, no, like no, well, La Taqueria, though, that place, Norma Road, you've been there? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, there's two of them. I think there's one in town as well. Is there? I've been to something called... Well, I'll have to go to that one as well, uh, then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's fucking loads of stuff popping up now. Like, and I, like if I put up questions... They're for, selling bow buns in Oman. Yeah. Yeah. They are. The last place I got a bow bun was fucking Times Square. They're selling them, <laughs> they're selling them like, empty ones in Marks and Spencer's now. You know, and like you can grab that and then you can cook your own filling or whatever. Yeah. Them, crazy. Like what 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 like nationality is Baobun? Korean or something? Yeah. Do you reckon they're eating fucking Irish stew in Korea? Probably. <laughs> Probably. I would pay for it. Like Just if I if dying I, for a fucking, you know, like bit of black pudding or something. Something real <laughs> shitty. <laughs> Some some fellow has too many sakis and yeah. just wakes up and he's like, I, I tell you what, I need soda for. I absolutely, <laughs> I am, I'm absolutely busting <laughs> for some ballon of slow relish. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah that's I, fucking, that's more expensive than petrol. I know, shit. I bought some in the... Bali, what is it, Bali... 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 Bali Malo? Bali Malo? I don't... Bali Malo? Bali Malo? Oh, yeah, they're like, they're they're looking three quid off you for like a fucking... I know. Bought I bought some, bought some of it yesterday at the Butcher's Normal Road. Never gonna use it. Don't know even what the fucking put it on. <laughs> the relish? Aye. Eggs, man. Eggs. I mean, if I in our house, like if I made something, I was like, "There you go, Maureen," and sat it down in front of her. And Where's went, the wet? She went in the fridge, and there was nothing there. She would just throw the fucking whole thing in the bin. I think. But see, that's not the, the food group. The food <coughs> the food group is beige and wet. You have a the beige dry and 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 wet so like you've got your like chips and your yeah. rice and your spuds and your bread and yeah. stuff and you need something wet to stick on it that's the that's the food that's my food group look I, like I, beans thank you for or like listening, a chili? To, listening to my ted talk <laughs> yeah that's the most fucking rain man description yeah. of your dinner wet. <laughs> yeah, there's no wet i have no wet <laughs> this is dry where's my wet <laughs> could you stick a wee bit of wet on this for me please what do you expect this is the continuity here. What do you mean wet? Like like a like a beans Sauce. or like a Sauce. like a saucy thing? Yeah, like a little bit of wet. <laughs> we'll cut this out if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the yeah. That's some serious OCD shit there. What, what if something is just inherently dry? What if you're eating like a fucking? You better be up for wetting it yourself. But but <laughs> what's 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 quite dry but tasty? Like a pizza's not that so. You know, elements of I'm, I've gone too deep into this. Yeah. Like, really, I really it's, got a layer it's, not, of it's not really something I believe in at all. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just following it down the rabbit hole here, but I want to stand behind it like it is an actual thing. Uh, just give me welcome a, to Phil Taggart's wet and dry like podcast. Could, could you eat a like a chicken fried rice, which might just be a whole pile of dry? I put a little sriracha wet on it there, and you're <laughs> <laughs> sorted. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank God you don't work at a deli. Bit of I can, can I get a sausage bacon bob? Yeah. Do you want, we'll call it, do you want red wet or brown wet? <laughs> well, that's the, White wet? That's what they say. You must in, be Dutch. You, know, you must know from being in dairy, right? Like the red ding and brown dong. Like red sauce and brown sauce. Where the fuck would they say that? I'm pretty sure they said red ding is like a, 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 it's a dairy thing, isn't it? Or is it a Liverpool thing? Red ding. I've never Gives a wee bit of red ding on that. I think that might just be one mate you had. He's a fucking scumbag. <laughs> I, I remember... I hadn't seen a sausage bo- sausage bowl. Was it brown bone? Sausage roll bap. Till I was in Derry and I was like, what the fuck? Sausage is- roll bap is... What the it, fuck is this will, guy doing? Will change your life because you'll die after you eat it. Yeah. I actually <laughs> remember my mate Niall who... He was holding this sausage roll like, like a fucking cock or a microphone. And I was like, that's too tight to be holding. You know, this is how, you, you know, it's flaky. You're like, mm, mm. I'm eating that. He's like... And just Straight in. It. You can buy buttered baps in Derry as well. I remember doing like a... A work experience when I was like 19 and it was on a short sh- <laughs> short film for RTE and like I, I, was, I was just going up to the shop and they were like there was just baps there and they were buttered and I was like going what do you what do you put in this and they were just like that ah, butter bap do you want a butter bap <laughs> 15 p or whatever what a strange was place up, I was up the bog side and I oh, we get out I think you get single cigarettes in the bog side like put a couple of single cigarettes in the butter bap <laughs> better better Keep better, it. better red wet better red ding <laughs> Hey, red ding, go. two fags, hey, all about. See have, you later. I have to streamline my life. I'm a very busy man. I get me beans and these sausage rolls. <laughs> 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 That's like something you would see. <laughs> just fucking. It's actually making me feel sick thinking about it. Like really, I know it's, it's just spew. Derry is such a strange place. Like I know a guy wanting like a load of money on one of those like accumulator things, Aye. like a football thing, uh-huh. batting. I believe it's called. And uh, 
Intriguing. Won a load of money and basically just did his regular life times five, like harder and faster of playing pool all day and smoking and drinking. He did, <laughs> he did that more intensely until the money just fucked him. Like, like that's that's get you out of dairy money. Well, I but, mean, he, but he wanted to stay there and just do it harder. Fair play. I mean, he lived his best life for a, for a wee while and probably... He just turned it, turned, turned all the dials up. Turned it up to... The, what was the guy who, who won it and, and bought a load of stock cars and, like, he won millions and millions and millions. Like, he has all of the... Oh, he's really famous. He's got, like, all of the, the, the bling. Won the lottery or he won, something? Yeah, he won the lottery. And, like, oh, he, yeah, he bought, Michael something? Yeah, and he, he, he got, like, stock cars and he just, like, would... just He was just an absolute menace <laughs> with, with the cash. Oh, yeah. They should, make, they should definitely, like, oh, if you've won it, like give you some sort of personality test to go like you know is it is this good for you because like a lot of people who win the lottery and win money like that it completely ruins them they all go end up going bankrupt because well, they, they have no idea how oh, to like do that's taxes why and stuff. sports stars have like money mentors now you know like some young lad gets fucking millions Aye. playing football you, you feel a wee bit for like those like footballers in the 90s that are on like doing the doing like the you know the, the commentary and stuff on a really niche radio station or whatever you're like yeah. one if you had been doing this now you'd be getting 200 grand a week but back yeah. then you were getting like three and a half which i mean still probably a lot of money but yeah it's not like they must be i think that's why you've got like soonesses and stuff like who just hate pog because he's, he's literally earning what soonest does in a year and a week it's gross money like it's what do you what do you even do and the thing is they can't do anything with it because like they're they're they need to be athletes mm. and they need to be training all the time. So like actually the majority of them are really good at computer games and they're really good at watching Netflix. Yeah, I'm sure. There's like a lot of fucking rest time you have to take. I've had you know like I had messages from Jacob Stockdale. He plays for Ulster in Ireland, rugby player, and he's like, oh, I'm on the Patreon, and you're like, what? But then you're like, oh, he's probably like 25 and plays rugby, and then the rest of the time is just chilling. I'm on the Patreon too, actually. Oh, shit. Yeah. You see, I'm so rude to people now because it, it is at the point where it, there was certainly a time where you'd be like, oh, got a notification. Oh, got a... No, I just enjoyed it. So I was like, I'll give a wee bit back. Well, my, I'm giving you a hundred buck away. A hundred buck. You didn't even <laughs> notice. A hundred buck. A hundred ding away. Seriously? <laughs> see them goodies that you got for adding? I paid for them, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> Man's fucking dripped out with these trainers. I know. I'm fleeced. Fle I just love it. <laughs> I know. I'll be I've got my whole family outside. They, uh, they know how much this means to me. I'd be, abs <laughs> I'd be absolutely balling out of control if I didn't have you know an office full of shite and a producer. Which which one do you get rid of first, eh? <laughs> the gear. <laughs> now nah, still there with two iPhones. <laughs> it's not even my gear. Uh, so, this is what I was going to ask you. You were saying like, oh... You were talking about Belfast being like weird, and now that you're back, you're like, oh, there seems to be all these. It's great, yeah, I'm live enjoying events it. Events and blah blah blah. Mm. And musicians only got the sort of go ahead there, didn't they, to play publicly? Yeah, yeah I'm going to stand hall actually, and that's on, true on, on Saturday. Fucking what timing? What timing for them? I know, like it, it couldn't have, or it couldn't have worked out any better. I mean, well, I mean, it could have worked out much better. It couldn't have, there may well not have been <laughs> COVID in the yeah. first place, but um. <laughs> Yeah, though, like massive respect to those guys. They've done done everything they could, they could to keep it going, and they've got two festivals happening. Over, I don't work for them, by the way. I just like you know, big respect to them. Like. I did the first ever stand hall, and they never had me back. So did you? Did uh, that's probably that's the thing with a comedian though. Like you can go and get booked for somewhere and then slate it for like half an hour, and then they're like, no, no, it was just. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. They've had comedy every year. Mm. We've got a good lineup this year. Um, and no, I just I did the first one and it was very, I know it's very family friendly, but there was literally a woman breastfeeding a baby on the first fucking bench of a row of people. And I was like, at that point, I was like, oh, yeah, this whole set is just total filth. I think doing comedy, it, like it's not really set out for music festivals, is it? Not at it all. It kind of needs to be a comedy festival, really. I had one good experience. Um which was Glasgowbury. I might have seen. I might have seen you that. I went to all of them, and I, I thought it was going to be terrible. So I drank from like fucking eleven in the morning, and sure enough, it, it turned out great. But I don't really remember much of it. Was that the Was that the last year, the therapy year? Y yeah, therapy yeah. were playing, and then did someone step in for someone in therapy because the 
There was like someone from like fucking Lafaro or something. Yeah, yeah. well, no, no, or something. Herb <laughs> plays with therapy anyway. I think um, from from Lafaro um, or from Arvo Party even. Um, I did a DJ set that year and it was like old Blues Brothers stuff on, <coughs> and it was the most crack. I was just playing power ballads, like I want to know what love is and stuff like that. Just not even trying to be cool, like just playing these ridiculous Toto and all that sort of crap. And it was brilliant. It was so much fun. It's such a weird, what a treacherous fucking landscape for, because <laughs> it was like, it was like, it's obviously up a fucking mountain. So it's like sunny and you're having a great time. And then the sun goes down and then you're like, I better not sit down for longer. In than Soviet I. Russia, yeah, <laughs> you fall over and die, and we kick you off, man. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, if you were fucking steaming and fucking fell over somewhere, you would just get pneumonia over the over the end of the earth. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going for a piss. Uh, I don't smash. think I, I couldn't run a festival just simply due to the fact that if somebody hurt themselves at it, I would feel too bad about it. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But Glasgowry and yeah, Glasgowry was yeah, it, it was treacherous terrain. Like how the how they got like health and safety for that was ridiculous. But like they did, it was such a good festival. Like, it was the best. It was like, class. And I just, uh, I mean, it's one of them things. You're like talking about growing up. You know, the idea of like we there was like four of us slept in Mickey Bartlett's car. That slept in the car. Imagine the smell. I fucking don't you, need to imagine. You it. could bottle that and sell it to some pervert on the internet for <laughs> a lot of money. I just remember I was in the back, and uh, I just remember telling who was it? Fucking Rory Ward. I was like, "You got to open that window." And he cracked the window, and I put my foot up and stretched it out because it was so cramped. In the back. <laughs> I was like, ah, "Amazing!" Ah, just out the window. You ever stretch your leg out? <laughs> do you mean you haven't done it? Do you ever just stretch? I have actually. I, it's really enjoyable. Worst bit of stand up ever. <laughs> guys, you ever? Do you guys ever stretch your leg out? No. Yeah. Fair no. Uh, right. Anyway, what do you do for a living? <laughs> you're a. Oh right, you're a physiotherapist. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. What are the chances? <laughs> How good am I at this? <laughs> That's what I call manifestation. I, I put it out into the world, and there it is. <laughs> put it out into the, those are the ones that like do my head in. Manifestation the, people, the, the people who go, I'm just gonna put it out into the universe, and then they just sit there and eat like five bags of one kilogram things of what's it? <laughs> and they're like going, yeah. I'm gonna be the next Usain yeah. Bolt. Like what manifesting really is is working constantly, resetting yourself every day and thinking about what you need to do to get to the thing. Yeah, it's not it, just going. It's all up there. I, I'm going to be a fucking superstar. Exactly. I'm, I want to be the next Little Mix. All three of them. Four yeah. of them. I don't know how many is in them. But um, I, there's lots of people who just go like, you know, if you put it out into the universe, it will happen. They're like, yeah, if you think about it loads and you work really hard. And I actually feel like sometimes I have done that and that's the worst thing to do. I have a, I have a terrible mental thing where I'll go, oh, yeah, I want to do that. Or I say, like, I'm going to do this. And mm. I sort of think because I've said it, that it's, it's as good as done. Uh, yeah, but you know, like one of them things you're like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna lose four stone this summer. Oh, I do. Because I've said it, I'll celebrate with this three skip here. <laughs> I was, yeah, that's what. I, well, I mean, exactly the same as that. Like, anytime I try to lose weight or 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 try and get fit, it's exactly the same. It's like going, God, you know what would be lovely tonight? A load of pints. Yeah, the pints is. Killer. Oh, I would love a load of pints. Yeah, can't do as much now though. If I drink pints and dance. <laughs> tell, tell me that's not Zumba. Yeah, exactly. See, it's the problem. It's not the pints. It's the it's the wet and dry the next day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the and takeaways. You're on that salty, wet and dry. <laughs> you know, sugar salt fucking roller coaster all day. On that roller coaster. On that on that triple takeaway. Yeah, you're on that you're on that wet dive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's what's your what's your takeaway limit on a hangover? How uh, many am I allowed? Like, how many is the most you've ever done? I've done, I've done like, I think I've definitely like, I'm pretty went, sure I've done three. Yeah, I've definitely like went for, you know, like a breakfast somewhere and then just died a bit more and then decided like, yeah, I'm going to need a fucking Chinese or something to get me out of this. Is it too, what time is it? Like, is it too early to get a Chinese now on a when, Thursday 12 o'clock morning? now? Just hip. I had my vaccine. Did you celebrate? Yeah. <laughs> now you can really live life on the edge with Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some bats and a half and half. <laughs> you go to that Lee Garden place in Botanic. Just get all the fucking dim Listen, I don't, I don't know what any restaurants are good at the, at the minute since I've been back. Like, I've been to, like, about three or four, and that's about it. 
I'm uh, the Belfast is my my uh, culinary oyster. I've, it's there's good. loads there's of places. Great spots. Me and Nal went to Kamakura the other day before our gig, and he had this fucking one of these cameras on the table, and in the most stereotypical fashion, the Asian guy that was working there was like, "Oh, that fucking camera, sweet camera man." Just lost his mind over this camera. We I was were like, like, "Get the noodles, bro." I was doing. Some, we're in a rush. Some filming um, with. Uh, that's what that's a word they always take the piss out of you for over filming. Over, yeah, over filming, um, over in England, and uh, yeah, the, the guy like twice we were we were shooting once in down in Andy Town and once outside Ulster Hall, and we were doing a load, load of bits and twice like within an hour, boy, boy would come over and just sit there and stare at going, "What should you pay for that?" I know. What should you pay for that camera? Yeah, and you could say anything. You could say anything, but from fifty quid to fifty grand. Yeah, and you'd be like, "Hi." I hope I get you for oh, scrap. Well, scrap. <laughs> <laughs> scrap. Not worth the lens that's on, on it. Uh, not worth it. For, uh, the lens is be the most expensive part of it, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> and if you melted that down for the <laughs> copper, what am I talking? I <laughs> know. Oh, that was the... Who were we talking to? It's like every, every, everyone's da. Every car that's not their own is scrap. <laughs> you know, yeah. Take that, drive that Mercedes into the ocean. Fuck that. Uh, Just yeah. have a Mazda. <laughs> <laughs> Just have a twin cam, you'll see him a bit anymore. <laughs> There's one downstairs. Hectic. We will uh let's let's segue onto some questions. Now this is where <coughs> this is where any serious chat might might go out the window. Uh the fr- this is this is this is why these need vetted, but it's never fun to do that. First question is Tesco mail deal question mark. Um no. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you get the, the the sushi. You know when they put the sushi in the, the Tesco meal deal, and it's just it's literally just rice and one bit of cucumber, and you're like going, and that's that's dry with one bit of uh, one color. Bit, that's not enough wet. There's not enough <laughs> co- or none of color. Color's another one. That's the third group. <laughs> yeah, they're just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget your color. Which is your vegetables, isn't it? Yeah, it gives a uh, color wet dry, and uh, but. Yeah, totally. But the sushi's moist. It like, gives a wee bit of moist in colour there. <laughs> yeah, some of them are severely lacking in colour in the middle. <laughs> no, no to the Tesco made deal. Nah. Don't hate myself that much. I've had enough of them over the time. I just remember the, being caught. Co- I ate them all the time. Just the sandwiches are rotten. Yeah, I, yeah. when I worked in Curry's, I would I would dip into Tesco's and get the fucking thing. And uh, did you ever get, get caught off guard by something? They had, a you know, one of these like triple sandwiches? Mm. There's like three in the pack. Triple pack, uh, the trio. One of them was like roast beef and horseradish, but they'd they'd obviously been some sort of malfunction. Pepping mango and custard. Or no, no, just like in the dis- dispersion of the sauce. Is that a word? Distribution. Yeah. So I just took the largest, just load in my mouth of horseradish, and nearly just fucking died in the staff room. <laughs> it was like the fucking hottest thing. You ever had horseradish? <laughs> quite, yeah, it was quite. like fucking wasabi, and I was just like. <laughs> But obviously, like you know, I was only a f- I was only young. I didn't I, I didn't even know what the fuck horseradish was. I was just like, or what would have been in this? I, I thought a, it was, good, a good lawsuit. I There's thought it was too much horseradishness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking choking to death, crying all over the place. Fuck that. Going over to Denmark, local man in paper pointing at the amount of horseradish. Yeah. Look, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Taking Tesco down, putting a fifty p beside it to be like, look how much. Is in that. But see, that's what local papers do. Is like whatever the thing is, you're just pointing at it. It's like mm. this is man vomits. It'd be like you pointing at it, and there'd be like a politician. There'd be like an MLA going, maybe pointing at it as well, going, "No, nah, he's right enough. That is right enough." I had a fucking I had a, I had a photo shoot one time, and it would you know there were I don't know what it was for. Oh, is that the? I don't know what that is. Somebody says that would be a good prank for somebody to play on you is like hide a Casio watch somewhere in your <laughs> somewhere in your studio so you can't figure out where it is. I mean, there's about twenty of them around the corner, but um, weird flex. Uh, mm. What the fuck was I gonna say? Photo shoot. Yeah, I was doing a photo shoot, and I turned up absolutely dying. And you know when you're sort of a bit, you can be manipulated when you're just like, what? Yeah. Just get me fucking do this shit. Mm. And they were like, oh, we've got them. Um, this like clown, you know, like a sort of rainbow clown wig, mm-hmm. and this thing and all, because you're and you're like a Joker, you know, you're like a clown guy. Oh, and I was no. just like, this is on like you know where the Duke of York is, and I was like, all, all right then, and I fucking put this nose, on. and I was just like, 
I have this cutting out of the paper. To, I have it at home. And I was just like, whatever gets me through this fucking fully poisoned. Like, just my head poking around the corner. Like, <clears throat> at least you had a bit of makeup on or something. I, no. No? Just, just the nose. Just the nose and the hair. And I'm like, fucking, what's the crack, lads? Hey, it's a funny guy. People walking past. No, there's your man. I'm like, that's crack. Yeah, my first picture in Ulster, Ulster Herald was me with headphones on because I'd got a job as a DJ. In the middle of a park. I know. Like, what what happens if you're like a famous brain scientist? You like yeah. have like an, a brain from a cadaver out going, look. Yeah, no scalpel. It's just a scalpel to your own head. Look. It's famous <laughs> brain surgeon. <laughs> oh, fuck me. They're the worst. And, it, you know, they'll always send the guy who... Is not interested. No, he he's takes photos, but like he started in like 1989, and the gear didn't improve because he's like, yeah. I, just, I can't work that. I can't work that. <laughs> I've had a few of those where the guys like, you know, trying to figure out a digital camera, and I'm like, that's ah, just for the it's for the Herald here, or whatever. And you're yeah. like, and you're the guy. <laughs> you're the fucking guy. They send out. Hey, hold on. Oh, it's back in front. You're like, can we just do a load of selfies and just get yeah. out of this? My yeah. my camera, my, my phone's probably better than his. Exactly. You're like, do you have an email? No, 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 no. no. I wouldn't be using one of those. It's just send to be people. Trisha, box. mate, in the office. <laughs> How long do I ring her? Via payphone. <laughs> just fuck me. Here's one, Cormac Meenahan. Uh, at what age is it okay to start listening to Radio Four? Because Radio One melts your head. <laughs> I haven't listened to it since I left. Um, Out of spite uh, or just I wasn't. Yeah, well, no. Um, I mean, the, the, I mean, do they really have like three tracks? That's what it seems like. I listen to here's well, our rotation for the day: three tracks. Yeah, well, my my shows at night time. Like I had autonomy to play whatever I wanted, but I kind of listen to. Nice. I, I listen to Sex Music. I listen to Five Live. I listen to Radio Ulster. And I listen to podcasts. That's about it. Radio Four, I, I mean, what are you they, can what? listen to Radio Four at any time. Like, like, if you're the, the the sort of more middle class you are, the younger you can listen to it. I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to sort of gra- graduate to Radio Four. Yeah. Like if, if you've grown up in a household where Radio Four's been on, then it's fine. You. I mean, what do they do? Is it more chat? Is it more? It's, it's like do- like documentaries. You'll do, like a lot of the comedies. Okay. A lot of good comedy stuff would start there, like Mighty Bush and, and and things like okay, that too. But a lot of it would be. Um, but there's no like four lads in a white van, listening to like a radio play. <laughs> so on the Today's way. thought of the day. Yeah. Like, Shh. Quite, I think it was Confucius that said. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck up and try to listen to the hell on. Emmanuel Kant. More like Emmanuel Kant, am I right? <laughs> yeah, I'll drop my nuggets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that is classist and racist. Um, I think like, uh, no, I think you can listen to Radio 4 at any point. There you go. Stars in the Rise was really a weird concept for a show. Like, how was it so big? Like, really, like, think about it. Like, it's, it's, just, it's just like it's, just, ca- it's karaoke, karaoke, yeah. Where people just are dressed like really bad. Imagine Rod Stewart sitting at home with like his twelve children or whatever in a, in a Celtic shirt, yeah, watching watching himself because he's a big, big big Celtic fan, looking like um, a scarecrow. Yeah. Aye, what's the, what's the what was the South Park? Well, poop pants. Imagine like him sitting at home watching it on a Saturday because this is back in the days where it only was about four channels anyway. Oh, like, yeah. And he's like going, I don't look like that. Yeah. I don't look like that. It he, would be offensive, you know, it's to a certain point. You know, you'd be like, hey, someone would just be like, who the fuck is this fucking weirdo? I don't know, man. But there was the one dude who did Freddie Mercury who like had a full career off the back of it. There was a guy from Oma that was like a one of the world's most famous Elvis impersonators, a guy called, I can't remember his first name, it was like some, Mr. Chisholm. Um, and he was like, he was super famous, like um, in Ireland, as being an Elvis impersonator. Strange business, isn't it? The old who would you do? Who would you do? Me? Fred Durst, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It's the Chocolate Starfish. It's your <laughs> man, Fred Durst. If I say fox 46 times, it's 46 fox and it's fucked up rhyme. Shout out to Ben Stiller. Yeah. I'd be, Wes, I'd be your Wes Borland. Yeah. Well, anyone could be your Wes Borland. Yeah, to be fair. Paint the face up and fucking... I don't know who I would do. The only lookalike I ever get is Kenneth from 30 Rock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is a fairly niche one. Okay. A friend of mine just walks past me all the time. He's like, hello, Liz Lemon. <laughs> like, Shut up. It's not fair. Shut up, man. No one else gets it. <laughs> Let me see. What else we got? Do you, do you think radio stations will be a thing of the past? A streaming platform seem to be taking over 
uh, for listening, finding new music. Um, Ooh, ser- serious question. Um, also, can you help resurrect Tim Westwood's career? Tim Westwood's still doing it, man. Like he's he's on he's on Capital Extra and still daggering fucking nineteen year olds. His, his um, I I it always just blows my <laughs> mind that like he's older than my mom. Um, he left the same week that I started. Now, am I saying that I'm the new Tim Westwood? I think I may have missed the boat by by that stage. But I did once tell Stylo G I was the new David Radigan, and he gave me a dub plate. And it was like big up Phil Taggart, the bad man from London, and uh, and uh, does a dub plate just like it plays like thirty times and explodes? Or did I make no, that no, up? that's that that's the traditional sort of dub plate. Like, but like a dub plate would be like a personalized um, thing. That's like so. Like I had, I guess, I have a Stylo G dub plate. I have a big nasty dub plate. Mister Phil, what was it? Was gas pipe? Mister Phil burst the pipe. Mister Taggart burst the pipe. Phil Taggart burst the pipe. Gas pipe explode. It was when when I was going through my. Very, very big and significant grime phase where I had a lot of... Hello, Big Nasty. Uh, <laughs> what about you? <laughs> big Nasty has um, met met all of my family at three, four different occasions. Class. <laughs> yes. We had the Narsties over there the other night. Um, His mommy, Tina Narsty. Exactly. Finished all his wet. And <laughs> <laughs> took a box of wet home. Exactly. I did like a. I, I've, I've done a lot of stuff with Narsty in the past. And like, he, he's like. He <laughs> it lot just of, doesn't lot fucking of, roll off the tongue. A lot of Narsty business. But um, there was one show for Channel 4 I was doing um, called Best Before. And he's meant to be on with me and we're playing songs off, off decks. But he got, nice. so, he got so stoned during the filming, he kept eating a massive bag of Watsits. And he kept getting like orange watts of dust onto the decks. <laughs> it was pranging me out because I was just like going, that yeah, fader is so greasy now. Oh, that's a nightmare. That, that, would, fr- that would freak me out too. Even if, <laughs> see, when you said watts, it's, and I thought about touching you, anything. No one really eats watts. It's, you just kind of hold them in your mouth <laughs> till they eventually fade away. Exactly. But like, just that feeling of like, God's waiting room for Christmas. They're just stuck to your whole fucking teeth. Oh. <laughs> and then the fucking hands. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. But, um, yeah, shout out to Narsty. The picture of my mom and, uh, and uh, Big Narsty is one of my favourite photos of all time. Like, you must have a lot of shit like that. A lot of weird... It's a lot of, yeah. Like, I remember I got my mad to do an interview with Labyrinth and they started flirting with each other and I was like, this is really fucked up. Yeah. But that was back in the day when you were, like, starting out that summer and you think that, like having a parent or grandparent on makes things funnier yeah kind of does actually yeah yeah just forcing them together with fucking stushy here's my auntie with run the jewels exactly <laughs> <laughs> hey they're they're sound lads like, uh, like lp is one of the nicest in killer mike they're just class there's a really awkward photo where they're doing the run the jewels hand things but i'm st- standing in the middle so I don't know really know what what hand thing to do. So I do the fist as well. You do paper. So so it just <laughs> it just looks it just looks like I it really really just does look like I won I've won a competition. <laughs> and I, I'm yeah. just yeah you know like have you ever seen the video of like the the kids in the playground are doing all these cool dabs and then there's like the little kid at the back who comes yeah. on and does this like really really yeah. crap dab like I was like my my ex says like like basically that is me. I'm Here's just the middle crap, like crap dab west side like that. <laughs> Yeah, west side, east side. I was getting, <laughs> I was getting new glasses the other week, and I got sunglasses too. Mm-hmm. And I put them on, and they were like, "There is a couple of color options," and I went blue because I've seen LP wearing blue ones, mm. and that, you know that he's very cool. I tried to explain that to the woman who was about sixty-five. She didn't give a fuck. Can you cut my hair like LP, please? Here's a picture I, I took out of the magazine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> took it out of like there's a sort of chubby white dude that's good at rapping, and he's my my hero. Do you ever watch Hot ninety seven? <laughs> huh? <laughs> She's like, what, what, what are you on about there, love? No, you don't. No, I don't uh, mind. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Do you think do you think radio stations? Are, no, I think I don't think so. I think that people like you'll uh, just get. I think youth radio will change a lot, like in the next ten years. Like I think it, it will morph more than any of the rest of them do. Um, but I think that people do enjoy listening to a voice in between music or listening to, you know, like you're not going to get speech radio on uh, digital service providers. But people still want to hear curated stuff talked about. Yeah, they do, for sure. Whether. F- 13 year olds and 14 year olds do I don't know that's why I think it's going to change a lot I think you're always going to have if you were one you know like a sort of 
I was one to like a nerdy kind of, you know. You want to find out the new fucking shit? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that like there was I remember buying fucking like NME and all like a, yeah, like an I, asshole trying to figure out the, what was cool. The way we would have grown up listening to like Zane Lowe and stuff like that, I, I think that that is probably over. But I think that there's a lot to be said for what they're doing now in new music. Like there's it's just it's just a different it's a different ball game. I mean there there are like podcast you know like no jumper or something when he's talking to like soundcloud rappers you know like mm. these unsigned sort of hot rappers and stuff there's loads of stuff like that literally 18 month careers all of them like do you know, do you know what i mean you see like Lil yeah. Zans and stuff come up and they're like the hugest big artists in the world and then they're like where are they now and then like they're 23 and you're like wow how, yeah how can you be washed up at 23 uh, yeah no because it's like none of it it's it's very like you know it has no shelf life at all. It's just, there's, you know, you see all the trends come along and like, even the Lil thing. Everyone's fucking... No, no Lil's anymore, is there? Lil something. There's a few of them like, but um, it's just, it's just like a little hot sample of a song that's on a TikTok for fucking 10 minutes and then... There you go. It's that's, gone. I know, I don't, like, yeah, I, I feel too old for TikTok. Probably are. That's why I don't go near it. Yeah. I don't understand it. It's the same as Snapchat though. I mean, I'll 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 open it the other time and it'll it'll say like, oh, you've got fucking four hundred new followers or something. And I'm like, what? I'm not. I don't even do anything. <laughs> I've put some stuff on there yeah, like, yeah. that I had already made. Like, but it's a strange fucking world. Um, because there doesn't need to be a reason for any of it. I can't. I just can't be arsed with it. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Fuck it. Um. Sorry, not a question. All right, bro. Not a question. <laughs> No question. question. Could you give me back my straighteners, please? Uh, yeah, just really <laughs> fucking weird. Could you, uh, uh, what was it you said was nice off the menu and uh, fucking wherever? <laughs> <laughs> I do get shit like that. I, I should be sponsored by a lot of fucking... Uh, the potatoes have us in uh, <laughs> General Merchants. They're particularly quite nice. A lot of the chat is about General Merchants, um, which is weir weird when you turn up there, like in like our merch, the fucking General stuff, at General yeah. Merchants, and you're like, this is overkill. But we do a bit of a collab. Name a, maybe they might name a sandwich after you. They should do. Um, if I don't get a signature sandwich, I might fucking boycott them. Uh, what would be your go-to summer tunes? Oh wow, one of mine has to be American Boy by Estelle. Oh well, it would have to be the the one and only summer anthem. Uh, Daft Punk, uh, Get Lucky, Sound yeah. of the Summer. I've never heard that. No. <laughs> it's really, it's really good. It's like these two guys that wear helmets and they, they're French and stuff. And, <laughs> and, and they, they, they just really like music and disco. They don't speak, but you can tell. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they're not friends anymore. So they've got, they've taken their helmets off and gone all the ways. We had an episode of this podcast where Niall took me on a sort of history of where they stole all their music from. Oh, it's great. Like and it, I, oh my God, I felt like. Like old Shaka Khan tracks and stuff. They're just brilliant. They're really good. Like they are digging out crates and yeah. digging out records and samples. Like they're kind of like Tribe Called Quest and stuff like that. They're just, they're just brilliant at it. Even the who else was their prodigy? Giorgio Maroder. You okay there? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> just had a departure. I mean, some of it is super clever. Like the, the prodigy one where it was like one fucking little riff from a thing and they pulled it away out like and then it just sounded like wow, the wow. intro to like you know it's crazy like i can't listen to voodoo people anymore it was my um alarm at university mm. and it, i i would i shit myself every time i hear it now yeah i had i'll see if i can get it here um back in the days where you could set songs exactly it was great but like uh, i mean it kind of ruined it like now now my alarm's like uh, forest breeze or something that sounds like it's fabric softener. This was mine, which would give you the shits. Oh, Jesus Christ. That guitar is the kill by or, or that's, What is it? Search Party Animals called? But the fucking phone would nearly, like, hop off the thing when it came <laughs> on. Like, and lit like, sometimes it'll just come on the shuffle. It's like, nice nothing like a... PTSD. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm seeing them at the weekend. I'm excited. I know. You see, I've, again, that stand hall thing, I just... You know, you'd seen it come up and like, we're excited, we're excited. And then I'm like, oh, that's literally like fucking. You're going now, aren't you? Um, I go, yeah. Who are you going with? Oh, well, there you go. Uh, I don't know. Just take the pass. Don't take any pictures. <laughs> what about. A <laughs> hundred miles away from my house. A hundred. Oh, yeah. A hundred miles. I, you see, 
when Al moved home, I was like, sure, he just moved from Belfast. But then, like, New, here to Newcastle is what? It's as far as... Huh? Yeah, it's as far as I drive in the morning. Do you have to drive an hour up here to, to do this every so time? I, I, like, I just come from the other direction. We should just meet. So, where's in? Is there, like, Lisburn? Where do you want to go? It's pretty far, too. Uh, you get, you get far cheaper down there, boys, down around that. Down but I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Not with a contact. Uh, that's a hundred miles away. Yeah. Do you need an assistant to maybe carry a? I'm. I'm not doing anything at it. I, no, I, I'll, I'll, I'll stick you in the. Just. Just don't go home now. <laughs> until Stendhal, it'll cut like a good thirty miles off your journey. That's true. Yeah, you gotta stay places now, like. Because then you'll get there, and I, everyone, everyone's gonna be hammered, and you're like, "Well, I'm not gonna be here in fucking." I'm landed down on the Saturday morning. I'm not doing the, <laughs> not doing the Friday. Land down Saturday morning, and I'm going to camp for the first time. I normally get hotels and stuff, and I'm going to festivals. I've done me years and years camping. What's worse, a tent in Limavady or a hotel in Limavady? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to the Limavady Hospitality Trade. Yeah, uh, sponsoring this podcast today. <laughs> uh, Surely Colin can be a soul food selector on Chill the Beats some, at some stage. Yeah, totally. We actually talked about that, getting you on to pick some tunes. Well, this is this is what happens when you're know, talking about social media managers and management and stuff. Mm. You know, you send a couple of emails to each other. And then, and then just forget about it. Like that. <laughs> six months later, you fucking remember that you said it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love the variety of these questions. The thing is, because I'm on the Patreon, I can actually go and see these questions. I know. Alone. Which which country have have you been to that has the best looking women? <laughs> <laughs> what a, what a, like, that's like the sort of question that your like twelve year old like I'm, nephew would ask you. Where where where, where what's where the does, best country the for <laughs> odd women? Um, Latvia was top dog for me. Glad to hear it, David. You pervert. I don't know. I don't tend tend to objectify women in that way. Let me. No, s- let Sims. Me s- the Sims. The digital ladies. On this. Yeah. <laughs> no, d- d- second rate digital ladies. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. Listen, I have no good answer for that. There. Uh, yes, I'll take this one. There are people that would get rid everywhere. <laughs> there we are. Diplomatic. Yeah. That's very diplomatic. Like, oh. um, there's a bit. The bit of something for everybody everywhere. Yes. There's more to Ireland than this. Yeah. Have some respect. There are sexy bitches uh, everywhere. <laughs> Cut that out. Uh, oh, is this the last question? Phil, how do you feel... Oh, sorry, how do you find working uh, with the Radio 1 DJs? How did you find it? Um, some people seem to have real musical passion um, and some seem to use it. When their TV careers have stalled. Oh, this is deep <laughs> shit. <laughs> you can tell the difference between somebody who's come up through radio and somebody who's come through TV. You think so? You can just tell, yeah, because they're, they're different. I mean, obviously they're different mediums, but like this... It's hard. Like, you know, you've done TV, right? Like, people, like if you've started if you've started in TV... Very little. You but. are used to a big team of people and you'll have... Like, you know, loads of different producers and, and editors and ADs and cameramen and all, and all these people. And there'll be runners who'll be, like, running about getting you yeah. stuff and you'll get makeup. I mean, like the, you're, you're kind of mollycoddled from the very start to make sure that you're in the best pl- mm-hmm. place possible for when the other goes live or you're shooting. And radio, it's literally like, there's a microphone, there's a producer, do your job. Yeah. And I, I way prefer that because it's live. You, that, that's that's how it works, and you you get it out, you say it, and it's done. Um, whereas like TV people sometimes like they have a good personality maybe, but they fi- they find it quite difficult to maybe move from an auto cue and and be themselves. So it takes them a lot lot longer to to be themselves on radio. Whereas like people who come up through community radio or various different radio stations um, have developed that over years, so they're generally quite b- better at it. I mean, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, you, you. I think you're just. It's just who's taking it or who's taking it seriously. Yeah, yeah I wish. Know. I wish there was like a better answer to go like, oh, do you know who who's a dick? <laughs> well, no, but there's there's not like they, they they. I think in the '90s and 2000s there was a lot of really big personalities um, there, and the generation coming up now are everybody's very sound and everybody knows what they need to do to get to the next bit, but they're all pretty friendly mm-hmm. there's no real sort of bitter enemies in there i'm sure like you know 
before my my time there. I, I heard loads of stories about like absolute jerk offs, like that that, that would have <laughs> jerk offs. <laughs> I haven't said the word jerk off in years. I don't know why I said there now. But yeah, we've heard loads of stories, but everybody that I was there, yeah, fine. Get on. Like yeah. Everybody stays out of each other's way as well. Not in the bad, not in the stay out of my stay out of my way. But you're coming in to do your show and then you're going home. Yeah, it's like sh- right. shift shift work. You're just it's like, like well, see Yeah, later. what about you? How's things how's your, yeah, hi. Right. No, no, no. Hi. Right. Is that essential that, you know, like sometimes you'll, you'll get the little sort of overlap of people? Oh, such and such is in. He's coming on at four and they're like, hi, are you? I'm good. Uh, you pop into the studio and you say hello for a minute. And yeah, and just everybody, it's just nice. It is the same as like any other yeah. job, really. I wish there was like some some dirt, rancid dirt to, to spill I on. I suppose, I suppose they're like related to comedy. You can tell people who it's fairly dull <laughs> just want to do comedy and they're yeah. like real students of comedy. And then you can tell the people who are like a bit arty and a bit drama school, a bit theatery, who yeah. think it's like another creative outlet. I'll try this too. And it's like, you're like, I don't know what's missing there. A bit of fucking venom or something. They're like, oh, this is just me talking and performing. Yeah. You know, it's there's a bit of bitterness that you need. In there. Yeah, you need a bit of fucking, you don't want to be there. You've, yeah. You've ended up there is how you should be doing comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah, this is what's left. You're just like going... I played in a band, and that's why I ended up on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're from TV, so you can fuck off. Yeah, exactly. Listen, flipping. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get recommissioned. <laughs> yeah. Get and yourself ca- over to the radio. And you're here to take my fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I settled for this first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. Oh, that's it. That's all our questions. Done. We'll wrap it up, man, because we've done an hour and a half. Wow. And that's loads. Uh, we had a lovely chat today. Enjoyed that a lot. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. What final list of where people can get your stuff, listen to your things? Just go and follow me on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. It'll all be up there. At Philly Taggart. At Philly Taggart. Chill debates. Ser- What's the name of the Serious Show? Uh, just Serious XM and Phil Taggart. But she, unless you're going to subscribe at and be in North America there's no point <laughs> like, is, is there not one of those weird like I think you can subscribe to it like I mean yeah. you, you can if you if you do have so, some people do have serious and if you do have it uh, get locked get locked I was wondering if there was one of those like you know say you watch like sport like the UFC or something hmm. big sort of uh, maybe like subscription thing or pay-per-view but then they're like because it's on a bit of a weird time for you we just give it to you on B- like BT Sport <laughs> is that like serious where it's like you're not getting it you know less than live over here but you know we can sneak, yeah. it, sneak it out the back door sneak, sneak it out the back door yeah exactly I'll, I'll I'll like I'll just like um I'll find a way of like channeling it through onto some sort of like live mix cloud stream or something in the middle of this podcast we'll just start a three hour show <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where yeah I've got to go and record my, my, my show for, for today um god knows what I'm going to talk about but we'll see we'll find out Wet. I'm just gonna chat about. I'm gonna about, chat about. I really did not expect to be chatting about wet and dry. It was a, a concept that I came up with maybe when I was about fifteen. Yeah, it's it's one of those things you've let you've let out now, and you're like, he. I thought that was normal. Fell from, fell from the radio. Was a weirdo. Yeah, it's a real strange. That's dude. An, chips and wet is what I'm gonna call. It. <laughs> anyway, we'll call it a day. Thanks again. Thank you for having me on. No worries. Cheers. Glack. 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 Look, 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 fuck you. <laughs>